Hello students, uh, in this uh, session we will try to learn locking mechanism in Bitcoin transactions. Uh, so before studying the scripting language, um, we have to understand the concept of uh, inputs, outputs, uh, then what is uh, locking script, unlocking script. Uh, so these are the uh, core elements uh, of the Bitcoin uh, uh, transactions. Uh, so, we will uh, try to understand the concept of inputs and outputs, uh, locking script and unlocking script. Uh, so, Bitcoin transaction is made up of uh, these elements, inputs, outputs, uh, locking script and unlocking uh, script. So, uh, in Bitcoin uh, transaction, we do not transfer any money, any Bitcoins, but we uh, transfer outputs from previous transaction to the uh, next uh, transaction. Uh, so, what is the concept of uh, this uh, inputs and outputs, uh, locking script and unlocking script uh, that we have to understand. Uh, so, uh, as in a traditional programming language, uh, we know that uh, what is input, uh, what is output, uh, inputs are some variables and on that uh, variables uh, the program will perform some operations and then we get the output. Uh, but in Bitcoin transaction uh, the concept of output is reverse, uh, reverse of uh, traditional programming uh, language. Uh, so, outputs uh, we receive from the previous transactions. Uh, outputs are nothing but the, uh, the value uh, that is received from the uh, previous uh, transactions and inputs will uh, spend this value, inputs will operate on this uh, outputs from the uh, previous transactions. So, to understand the concept of this uh, inputs at outputs, uh, we will take a simple uh, example. Uh, so, uh, uh, the reason behind the delay of this lecture uh, is also uh, the same thing, uh, the reason that how to explain the concept of inputs and outputs to the students uh, is a big challenge in front of me, uh, whatever the books I am referring uh, for this subject, uh, in that subject. Uh, uh, no clear cut description is given on this inputs and outputs, locking script and unlocking script. Uh, so, uh, until we understand the concept of this input, outputs, locking script and unlocking script, uh, it is difficult to understand the uh, Bitcoin transactions, how the transactions are processed at a uh, low level. Uh, that is difficult to understand without understanding the concept of inputs, outputs and uh, scripts uh, in the uh, Bitcoin transaction. Uh, so, uh, we will start with our, our discussion uh, with a simple example. Let us begin uh, the story of transactions uh, with the birth of a fresh batch of uh, Bitcoin. So, you are mining Bitcoins on your own uh, and by some miracle you have managed to mine a block of transactions and earn yourself a fresh batch of uh, 25 coins. That means you will receive the uh, 25 coins. Initially, uh, we have the 25 coins in our hand, and with this, uh, how this uh, 25 coins can be transferred uh, to another address. Uh, that concept we have to understand. So we can, uh, you can see the example. Uh, uh, we have uh, 25 uh, coins and these coins belong to the address 1. Uh, so, address 1 is our address. Uh, uh, so, the uh, this uh, 25 coins, uh, this transaction is stored in the uh, Bitcoin um, network. You have initially uh, 25 coins and you can see this is the Bitcoin network. Uh, this is the uh, 
bitcoin uh, network uh, uh, so uh, address one as initially uh, 25 coins and uh, this how this coins can be spent how this coins can be transferred uh, that we will see so let us uh, use one of these coins to buy some uh, cold drinks. So, we have initially 25 coins. Uh, we have initially 25 coins and we use uh, one coin out of these 25 coins uh, to buy some uh, cold drinks. And now, uh, your other first instinct, instinct would be to take one of these coins. We will take one of uh, 25 coins from the batch of 25 uh, to pay for the uh, cold drinks. Uh, we have to send the entire batch of uh, 25 coins in the transaction. So, you will try to understand uh, the concept, the address 1. Uh, address 1 has uh, 25 coins and the address 1 wants to send uh, the 1 coin to the address 2. Uh, you can see this uh, uh, address 2, uh, this is the address 2. Uh, to which uh, the address one has to send the one coin uh, to buy the uh, uh, cold drinks. Uh, but what happened uh, when uh, uh, this address one, one, one will try to send the uh, one coin to the address two. Uh, so, we have to send entire batch of 25 coins in the transaction. Uh, so, entire batch of 25 coins uh, in the transaction is sent to the uh, uh, transaction data structure, uh, uh, but to make sure we do not spend all 25, uh, 25 coins uh, in a one bitcoin payment, we split the batch up, uh, we split this transaction. Uh, one transaction uh, that will uh, transfer one coin to the uh, cold ring shop and other transaction uh, back to our uh, own address. Uh, that means one uh, coin is deducted, one coin is deducted, one coin is uh, subtracted from the 25 coins and this coin um, will be, uh, be transferred to the address 2 and then you have the uh, 24 coins. Uh, so, this transaction has two parts, uh, one transaction uh, that will transfer uh, one coin to the address 2 and another transaction. Uh, that will return uh, 24 coins uh, to your address 1 and now your address 1 has uh, 24 uh, coins. So, you can see uh, the state of address 1 and address 2. Uh, this uh, you can see the uh, another figure uh, uh, to the uh, right side, you can see the state of address 1. Uh, the address 1 has two states. Uh, uh, or we can say two outputs. Uh, initially, you have 25 coins, then you have uh, sent one coin to the address 2, and now you have uh, 24 coins. Uh, you can see in the figure, initially, uh, uh, this address 1 has uh, uh, 25 coins, uh, then one coin, one coin uh, out of it, uh, one coin is transferred to the address 1. Uh, this one coin um, will go to the address uh, 2 and now you have uh, the uh, 24 coins. So, there are two states uh, 25 coins and one is transferred to the address 2 and now we have uh, 24 coins. Uh, so, uh, anyway um, uh, few days are passed uh, the cold drink shop uh, sold uh, us that uh, cold drinks. Uh, the cold drink uh, business has, is booming and uh, uh, cold drink shop is on the uh, uh, cold There are other uh, coins uh, uh, received in the uh, address to also. You can see uh, initially we have transferred one uh, then uh, the cold drink shop has made another transaction. Uh, then 3 uh, coins and then after that 0 coin coins and then 2 coins uh, then 1 coins. So, you can see there are uh, 
uh, number of transactions done by the this cold ring shop, uh, the cold ring shop has the address too and then uh, it has uh, the outputs, uh, you can see there are uh, 5 outputs, output 1 contains 1, um, output 2 contains 3, output uh, uh, 3 contains 0 0.5 coins, then output 4 contains 2 and output 5 contains 1 and out of this uh, outputs. Uh, now, the cold ring shop uh, owner wants to purchase a cold ring making machine. The business has grown up, uh, the cold ring shop has number of outputs in his account, number of coins in his account and he wants to purchase a cold ring uh, machine and for cold ring machine uh, this shop owner has to pay uh, 4.2 bitcoins. Uh, so, uh, to make the 4.2 bitcoins uh, in address to uh, there are number of coins uh, you can see 5 coins uh, 5 outputs and from these 5 outputs uh, what uh, the uh, bitcoin transaction will do uh, it will gather the uh, outputs how the outputs are gathered to make the 4.2 uh, bitcoin uh, you will see in the pre uh, next slide. So, the coding shop does not have single output. Uh, at their address uh, to cover the cost of cold ring machine. So, co cold ring shop do not have 4.2 uh, bitcoins uh, in a single uh, output. So, what cold ring shop has to uh, do? It has to combine the uh, other outputs, uh, it has to combine the other outputs uh, uh, to get a total uh, value uh, greater than 4.2. So, instead uh, the cold ring shop, uh, you can see cold ring. Uh, shop has to gather, you can cold ring shop has to gather a handful of outputs uh, together, uh, together to get a total greater than 4.2. So, cold ring shop has to combine the outputs uh, and it, uh, the cold ring shop, uh, the bitcoin, uh, uh, this uh, network will combine the outputs uh, in such a way that uh, that have the value greater than 4.2 and from that uh, combined or gathered uh, outputs, uh, they will spend the, uh, they will send the uh, 4.2 uh, value to the address 3 uh, from which the uh, cold ring shop owner wants to purchase the uh, cold ring making machine. So, when we construct the transaction, you can read the second sentence uh, in this uh, figure. Uh, so, when we construct a transaction, the outputs uh, we are gathering up to be spent are referred to as the uh, transaction input. So, whatever the outputs we uh, uh, gather together, uh, we combine together, uh, that will become an input, uh, that will become an input for this transaction. What transaction uh, to transfer 4.2 bitcoins to uh, address 3. Uh, so, when you are saying uh, an output in a transaction, it is temporarily called an uh, input. So, uh, we have to understand the concept of output here. Output will become a input for the transaction, output from the previous, uh, output from the previous transaction will uh, become the input uh, for the next transaction uh, and these outputs are unspent, uh, whatever the outputs uh, which is received from the uh, previous transaction, this output is unspent and this output can be spent uh, by the input uh, in this current transaction. Uh, current uh, uh, transaction input will take the value from the output of the previous transaction and it uh, this input will spend the uh, spend this uh, uh, output from previous transaction and they will generate another output for the uh, next transaction. Uh, so, this is the concept of inputs and outputs, though unspent outputs however are still good uh, for spending. Uh, so, we call these unspent in previous session also we have studied, uh, studied the unspent transaction outputs, unspent transaction outputs are outputs we receive from the previous transaction and these outputs are values, these points outputs are bitcoin and these outputs will become input for the current transaction. Input transactions will utilize, input, input transactions will, will spend uh, 
the output from previous transaction and they will generate the another output for next transaction. So, this is the concept of uh, inputs and outputs uh, used in the uh, Bitcoin. Uh, so, what is UTXO? You, we have studied the long form of UTXO in the previous transaction. Uh, this is the input output that we receive from the previous transaction. The unspent outputs, however, are good for spending. Uh, out, out, unspent outputs and that are the outputs uh, we receive from the previous transaction. This is the value. This is the amount of. These are the amount of Bitcoin that we receive the uh, we receive from the previous transaction. And current transaction can spend. Current can, transaction can utilize this output for uh, transaction in this current. Uh, uh, transaction. So, this is uh, the unspent outputs are however are still good for spending and so we call these unspent uh, transaction outputs. So, whatever the outputs we receive from the previous transactions are called unspent transaction outputs and these outputs are available for spend uh, in this current uh, transaction. Uh, so, uh, now, we have to understand the concept, uh, it might have clear to you uh, now what is the concept of outputs and inputs. This concept is reverse uh, uh, whatever the concept in the traditional programming language. In traditional programming language, we have uh, 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 variables that is input uh, that we give to the program, uh, program will do some operations and then we, we, then we get the output. Uh, but in this we receive the outputs from the previous transaction. Output is nothing but value. Output is nothing but a amount of bitcoins uh, that we receive from the previous transaction and that outputs are available to spend in this uh, transaction, in current transaction. The outputs from the previous transaction will become the inputs from the uh, inputs to current uh, transaction. Uh, so, whatever the input uh, we will uh, whatever the input transaction uh, that will spend the money that should not be greater than output because we if we have 10 bitcoins received from the previous transaction uh, we cannot spend uh, more than 10 because we have 10 bitcoins in hand uh, that we have received from the uh, previous uh, transactions. Uh, so, you can uh, see this basic uh, this uh, sentence. Uh, this is very important. Uh, sum of all output values uh, less than or equal to sum of all input values. So, sum of all output values, uh, whatever we receive from the previous transaction, is less than or equal to sum of all uh, input values. Uh, so, if sum of all output values less than sum of all input values, that means if we have 10. Uh, outputs received from the uh, previous transaction and uh, if sum of input values is 9 that means 1 what is the difference? Difference is 1 and this difference goes to the minor. Uh, this difference may go to the minor for transaction fee. Minors we know that minors get the reward for verification. Uh, so, if we, we receive the 10 uh, bitcoins from, from previous transaction and if input spend 9 bitcoins then 1 is remaining and 1 can go uh, as a, a fee, transaction fee uh, for the miners. Miners will get the reward uh, for uh, transaction verification. Uh, so, this is the concept of input and outputs in the uh, bitcoin uh, transaction. Uh, so, what is script? Uh, in this session, we, we are not supposed to go into the details of script. Uh, in next session, uh, we will try to understand the concept of script, uh, but before that, uh, try to understand uh, just uh, basic thing about the scripting language because we have to understand locking script and unlocking script. Uh, so, student script is a uh, mini programming language uh, used as a locking mechanism for outputs. Uh, so, uh, locking uh, script is placed on every output. Uh, so, locking script uh, is from the previous uh, transaction. Uh, uh, so, an unlocking script uh, must be provided to unlock an output. That is when you are using it as a it as an 
uh, input. So, this is again another typical concept of locking script and unlocking script. Uh, these concepts are very difficult to digest uh, because these concepts are new, uh, these concepts are reverse of the uh, traditional programming language. So, uh, if full script is valid, uh, that means that script must have unlocking script and uh, locking script. Uh, locking script means uh, the script uh, received from the previous transaction and uh, whatever the value, whatever the bitcoins uh, that we receive from the previous transaction, on that transaction uh, some input will operate, uh, uh, that input will operate with the help of locking script and uh, we require an unlocking script uh, to unlock the outputs, to unlock the outputs uh, data received from the uh, previous uh, transaction. So, uh, we will try to understand the concept of this uh, locking script and unlocking script. Uh, so, what is script language? Script, script is a very basic programming language. It consists of two types of things. It contains data, uh, for example, public key, signature key. It also contains the opcores and opcores will operate on some uh, data, some uh, operands. Uh, so, in next session, we will try to understand the concept of the scripting language, but before that, uh, we have to understand the concept of locking script and unlocking script, try to digest, try to understand the concept of this locking script and unlocking script. Uh, so, locking script is placed on every output you create in a uh, transaction, uh, so every output, uh, uh, for every output there is a locking script. This locking script is nothing but the script from the previous transaction. Uh, so, a locking script is placed on every output uh, you create in a uh, transaction. Uh, so, you can see uh, this is the output uh, received from the uh, previous transaction and this uh, on this transaction uh, on this output, uh, this locking script, you can see, uh, locking uh, script is placed uh, on every output that you create in a uh, transaction. Uh, then unlocking script and unlocking script must be provided for every input. Now we know that uh, every output has a locking script and if we want uh, to unlock if we un want to unlock the value, uh, the outputs uh, received from the uh, previous transactions, then we require unlocking script. Uh, with unlocking script, uh, we can uh, unlock that output and then we can spend, uh, we can spend uh, this output uh, in this transaction. How the output can be spent? Uh, there are inputs. Uh, outputs will become inputs for transaction. Uh, so, whatever the value uh, received from that transaction, the inputs will uh, operate on that value and they will produce another output, they will produce another output for next transaction. Uh, so, try to understand, this is very typical con concept and unlocking script must be provided for every input you want to spend in a transaction. Every node will then combine and run these two script. Uh, to make sure they validate. Uh, so, every node uh, require uh, two script uh, to validate the transaction. Uh, one uh, locking script uh, that is created uh, from the previous transaction, the locking script is uh, uh, from the previous transaction uh, and uh, we have the uh, outputs uh, and unlocking script. Uh, Unlocking script is required uh, to unlock the outputs. Uh, until we unlock the output, uh, that outputs not are not available to spend. Oh, uh, that outputs not available to spend. So we have to unlock the outputs, and then this outputs will become inputs. Outputs will become the inputs for uh, this current transaction, and current transaction. Uh, will uh, do some operations with whatever the value, whatever the bitcoins received from the previous transaction. They will send these bitcoins to some another, another address, uh, then when they will send uh, these bitcoins to some another address, they will create the locking script, locking script and uh, they provide the unlocking script uh, to unlock this outputs for the uh, next node. Uh, so, this is the concept.
so transaction is the process of uh, what you can see what is the concept of this locking script uh, in Bitcoin transaction. Uh, so a transaction is the process of taking existing outputs and creating new ones from uh, them. So what is transaction? Uh, transaction will take the output from previous transaction this outputs will become uh, input uh, this is the output from previous transaction and uh, this output will become the input for uh, this current transaction uh, this output will become input for current transaction and uh, from this uh, uh, transaction uh, new ones are created new outputs are created new outputs are created you can see uh, this is new outputs uh, one output will spend some money from this transaction other output will uh, send the uh, balance whatever the balance uh, after spending the uh, value that will be returned to the uh, address one we have seen in the previous example address one and address two address one will send some uh, money to uh, uh, buy the cold drinks uh, then whatever uh, amount he will send and whatever the amount is remaining that is written to the address one. So transaction has two parts. Uh, then it is during the creation of these outputs we give each one a lock. So when we create a outputs uh, from the previous output uh, you can see uh, this is the previous output and from this previous output uh, uh, you can see uh, we have created uh, two transactions uh, this is uh, one transaction and this is another transaction and on this transaction you can see this lock is placed lock is created this, so it is the during the creation of uh, this output that we give each one a lock. So when we want to send bitcoins to a friend, uh, we create the new output and add a lock uh, to this output and uh, only the owner of uh, uh, this outputs can use this, uh, only owner of this uh, uh, you can say address uh, can use this output. Uh, so we, can, we provide the ownership of these outputs uh, for the uh, next uh, transaction. Uh, we are locked that uh, output and that uh, we require a unlocking script uh, to unlock the output. So uh, when we send uh, this uh, outputs to the next transaction, uh, we have to send two types of things, locking script and unlocking script. Uh, if uh, the next transaction, next node, the address uh, to which we will send this bitcoins. Uh, that uh, next node requires a unlocking script. Uh, without unlocking script, uh, he cannot. Uh, that node cannot spend the outputs. Uh, that node cannot uh, use the outputs as inputs for the, uh, the uh, transaction. So this is uh, the concept. Uh, so as you may have noticed, you are nearly uh, never really sending bitcoins in a transaction. So you can notice that uh, in bitcoin transactions. Uh, we are not sending bitcoins bit, but we are sending outputs from previous transaction to the next transaction. Uh, so outputs received from the transaction will become input that input will do some operation that input will uh, some do some operation and they will produce the output for the next transaction. So before producing the output they will place the lock, uh, lock on uh, each output and they provide the unlocking script. Uh, unlocking script uh, in that unlocking script there is a private key or you can see digital signature and by using that digital signature next node uh, can unlock that uh, transaction so you can see they unlock that output so instead uh, we are not sending any bitcoins but we are sending the outputs uh, from uh, one uh, transaction to the uh, next transaction so instead uh, instead of sending the bitcoins instead you are constructing a transaction that creates new outputs. So uh, we will not send bitcoins but instead we create new outputs and sending uh, the transaction data into the bitcoin network that transaction data will contain uh, the outputs uh, from previous transaction uh, then locking script, unlocking script 
and uh, then we will wait uh, uh, for uh, uh, this transaction data to be mined uh, in the Bitcoin uh, network or blockchain uh, network. So, my the miners, miners will mine, miners will verify this uh, transaction data. So, even though the blockchain is a file of transaction on a practical level, uh, you can think uh, of it as a storage of unit of outputs. Uh, so, you will try to understand this uh, typical concept student blockchain or you can say Bitcoin uh, uh, is a storage uh, unit for outputs, Bitcoin uh, network uh, blockchain will store only outputs whatever we received from the previous state, uh, then when we operate on outputs, uh, then the state will change, new outputs will be produced, that outputs are added to the uh, uh, Bitcoin uh, network. Uh, so, the outputs flow uh, in the uh, Bitcoin network, uh, the outputs from previous uh, node to the previous transaction to the next transactions input inputs will change the state of outputs they will take the outputs from previous transaction they will do some operation they will transfer some bitcoins and then uh, they will produce the new outputs new outputs have the lock lock is created on new outputs and uh, unlocking script is required to unlock the outputs so uh, when you want to send uh, your bitcoins to someone, uh, you simply refer to the outputs. Uh, if you want to send some bitcoins to uh, someone, uh, you sim uh, simply uh, give the value uh, in terms of outputs and these outputs are spent by the inputs. Uh, so, you can see uh, when you want to send your bitcoins to someone, you simply refer to the outputs in the blockchain that you, you are uh, able to unlock. You must have a uh, unlocking script uh, to unlock that outputs. Uh, the node must have unlocking script and we, with using the unlocking script, the nodes can unlock the um, outputs and nodes can use uh, these outputs uh, uh, to send to the another uh, uh, transaction, next transaction. So, outputs will become inputs for this. Uh, current node outputs outputs received from the uh, previous transaction uh, will become the inputs from the input to this node uh, input to this transaction and to spend these outputs uh, we require unlocking script uh, without unlocking script it is difficult uh, it is not possible to unlock the outputs uh, un outputs are available for spending if we are able to unlock the outputs so, before spending uh, the outputs, we have to unlock, we must have unlocking script. So, uh, when this transaction gets mined in a blockchain, the outputs you use will not be able to used again. So, once the transaction is verified, once the outputs, uh, once the transaction data is verified, once the outputs are spent by the inputs, uh, these outputs cannot be used again. Uh, these outputs will become permanent. Uh, so, Bitcoin network is uh, a file, uh, a ledger uh, that contains outputs, output, outputs and nothing more than outputs. So, how do you create an output lock? Uh, output locks are written uh, in a basic programming language called a uh, script. Now, most interesting uh, part of this locking script is a uh, check private key uh, which is function that we use to help uh, set the requirements for the uh, lock. Uh, so, to unlock the script uh, whatever the private key, whatever the digital signature uh, provided by the previous transaction, uh, uh, the node who has created lock, who has locked the transaction from that node the unlocking script is provided and from that unlocking, uh, in that unlock, unlocking script there is a digital signature, a digital signature is derived from the private key and hash value and uh, this digital signature uh, from the locking script, unlocking script and locking script uh, is used uh, to unlock the output. Uh, so, you can see 
so for this particular output we have set a log that wants to compare uh, you can see uh, for this particular output we have set a log that wants to compare the address uh, address uh, from a uh, address uh, with a private key and if we can uh, uh, provide this log if we can provide this log with a if, if, if we can uh, we can have the private key if we have the private key to unlock this transaction that means if we have the mechanism to verify the digital signature if we have the unlocking script uh, then we can unlock this output and then this output can be uh, utilized this outputs can become a input for this current transaction so how do you unlock the output lock when you construct the transaction data you include an unlocking script this unlocking script is used uh, this unlocking script is used to unlock the output uh, so for example you can see uh, uh, to unlock a typical uh, locking script if we unlock if we want to unlock a typical locking script uh, for example address and then check private key this check private key is a uh, of course a one command one function from the scripting language and we need to prove that uh, we need to prove we want the we have to prove that we have the private key we have the digital signature we have the private key to unlock this uh, output and if we have the private key uh, if we have a digital signature uh, then we can unlock this output and we can use this output this output will become a input for current uh, transaction so how node unlock the output so when a node receives the transaction data they will run a locking script and unlocking script together to see if your digital signature matches the address uh, that the output has been locked to uh, so they will uh, uh, use the locking script and unlocking script uh, to unlock the output so if everything is cool the node accepts the transaction and passes it on to the other nodes who will each uh, in turn run the each uh, each node will uh, run this uh, locking script and unlocking script uh, to verify the transaction to validate the validate the to lock and unlock uh, the transaction and that is how you unlock lock and unlock uh, so uh, in previous uh, slides we have seen that uh, we provide a unlocking uh, uh, we provide a private key uh, private key uh, to the uh, next transaction we provide an unlocking script and in unlocking script uh, we say that there is a private key and by using the private key uh, the next uh, transaction can unlock the output next transaction next node can uh, unlock the output but this is not the case we are not directly providing the private key uh, instead of private key uh, we provide a digital signature we create something called digital signature and in digital signature we are not directly providing the uh, private key uh, so uh, thanks to the magic of this digital signature and uh, check signature function uh, we can still lock outputs we can still lock outputs without providing a private key instead of providing the private key we provide the digital signature and by this digital signature in unlocking script can be used to unlock uh, the outputs and uh, without having to give uh, private key directly so this is the concept uh, used in uh, uh, bitcoin transactions so dear students in this session we try to learn what is the concept of inputs and outputs outputs are nothing but the values that we receive from the previous transaction uh, these values will become the inputs for uh, current transaction uh, so with these outputs there are two types of script unlocking locking script from the previous transaction and unlocking script is provided uh, that, that unlocking script is used to unlock the outputs uh, so this is the concept this is very small concept in one line we can explain this concept but uh, this concept is typical difficult to understand i have tried my best uh, uh, to explain this concept so i request to the students please go on youtube uh, you will find different videos uh, that will explain how we can what is the concept of inputs outputs locking script and uh, 
unlocking script uh, that you try to understand uh, uh, the concept of this uh, basic concept, very basic concept inputs, outputs, uh, locking script, unlocking script you try to understand. If you under, want to understand uh, this uh, Bitcoin network and if you want, if you want to become an expert uh, in the field of blockchain technology, uh, so go to the basic level, try to understand the basic concept. Uh, I am trying my best, but if uh, you are unable because this concept is typical, uh, so you can use the videos, uh, you can use the different sources on the internet uh, to make, uh, to understand the concept of this input, output, uh, locking script and this is not given in any book. Uh, in any book, how the inputs are processed, how outputs are processed, how locking and unlocking scripts are used, that is given. Uh, but there is no more explanation about this concept. Uh, so, and no question will be asked in the examination about this concept. Uh, we have to the, uh, learn the scripting language. But before understanding the scripting language, uh, we have to understand the concept of this outputs, inputs and uh, uh, locking script and unlocking script. So, thank you students uh, for watching session. Goodbye.